you can tell we've been around each other listen, way listen. too long. Like both at the same time, just and see. <laughs> peace, peace, peace with everybody. What's up? What's up? What's up? Happy Tuesday, everybody. It's your man, Real DVS, and just Joy. Good evening. Thank you for tuning in. Welcome back. Yes, sir. We here on another DVS Tuesday afternoon, coming to you. I hope everybody is doing well. Um, it's been kind of rough out here a little bit. Oh man, I didn't know people were gonna talk about it, but um, just you know, briefly, gotta do it That's because it. for the reason I didn't do um, a show last week was um, I had an incident at a club. I was at a club, and you know, for people who were in underground house music culture, I put baby powder on the floor. <laughs> And the manager, unbeknownst to me, was standing off to the side, and she came over to me and was like, you know, you can't put it down. I was like, oh, well, you know, I didn't know. Like, there was no sign posted. So I said, okay, well, you know, I won't put any more down. And she said, well, I'm going to have to get this up now. Okay. Now, there was a show going on. People, there was a performance happening on stage at the time, and uh, I was dancing you know, in the powder, because I knew, I knew she was going to get it up, whatever. But I didn't know that she was going to go get a wet rag to do so. And when she went and got the wet rag, I'm like, okay. So I danced around the place where she did that. And the wet rag, as you know, will not get a baby powder. So she went and got a glass of water and poured it on the floor right where I was dancing and I slipped. So it's been a little, hey, what's up, Yvonne? And and let me say what's up to Rob Siv, because I know that he'd be out there watching. He'd be on the road, though, so he can't, you know, tune in and, and, and comment and things. But he'd be on the road. What's up to everybody out there? Just join me. Hey. Peace, peace, peace. Shout out to all my people. Thanks for tuning in. Yes, sir. Um, And this will be uploaded to uh, YouTube later. So, but uh, anyway, so I slipped. And for those of you who know, I've already had several back surgeries, so. Um, I don't have uh, live nerve endings in my back. Like uh, most of them are dead because of the surgeries, so I don't feel things when, like, if I fall or something hits me, I don't feel it the same way you do. So um, when I I fell, I stumbled, for, I twisted my ankle, and I had on platform shoes, and <laughs> I'm stumbling backwards, and people caught me, but my back hit the wall, and I already have a broken rod in my back, so I was kind of, you know. Pissed off. Up. And since then, I've been like kind of having headaches and these sharp, like stabbing pains in my back. It's like kind of crazy. What's up, Diamond D? What's up, Susan? Hey, how you doing? Oh, yes. What's what's going on, my man, Stephen McCaskey? We got the scumbag in the building, baby. Scumbag, hey, boo. I would like to have lunch tomorrow, but just cash at me the money. I don't want to spend no time with you. Oh. Whoo. I, I did not see that coming. No, he, he loves to hear that. He, see, that's why he was coming. He likes me to talk to him that way. Okay. Well, uh, listen, I just didn't know that that was what we were doing. Oh, I just... yeah, not. He's he not going to do it. You know he's not going to do it. But of course he likes right. me to talk to him that way. Right. Love you. But, um, so that's what happened at the club or whatever. Uh, and I need to say shout out to Diamond D. Uh, what's the Ashonda, Dawn, the ladies of She Is, everyone who was there. You women did a fabulous, uh, amazing thing. When, with the vision boards and everything, that was such an awesome event. Uh, I, I'm glad that I got to witness it. And I hope that you guys will, because I know Diamond D has an organization. So for if there are a lot of um, women empowerment, women supporting women organizations coming up. And I encourage you to join one with an open mind. Like Den of Mothers, co-sponsored by Just Joy Media. See, yes. Please, oh, uh, join one with an open mind. The support and things that you think that you lack in this society and, and in your life, you can find it. You can find a whole new family with these women. They are wonderful. They are doing wonderful things. So just uh, Diamond D, you can put, you go ahead and put your, the name of your organization or a link to your group or whatever in the chat. I do, I do not mind. Go and ahead and do that. And just back off of that. My bad, Taylor. <clears throat> I want to say that there's been a stereotype that, you know, Women can't work with women. You can't mess with this chick and I don't deal with her. You know, I don't get along with a lot of women. Mm -hmm. I'll go ahead and say that that time has passed and that spirit and energy has moved on. Thank you. There are women out here who are partnering up, teaming up for business, for the community, um, personally, mm -hmm. that are making a difference. You can trust chicks now. There's a couple of people you can mess with now. Um, I was about to curse, but... And, and, and it may not be some of these organizations, most of them have a core, five, seven, three, mm -hmm. eight, you know, people that keep it moving. It ain't 35 old women you got to worry about getting along with. It ain't, you know what I mean? It's not that. 
you can join these organizations, whatever you can provide, some time, some energy, some resources. You are a resource, whether you know it or not. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, your little bit with their little bit is doing a lot. So, like Lydia said, join a group, not just mine, but, you know, one locally, and make a difference as out there as possible. Absolutely. Um, and for those of you, I see some people have come and some people have gone. So, for those of you who are still here, I would like you to, before we get to the conversation, because we haven't even got to the conversation, I'm still greeting y'all. But, um... Before we get to the conversation, please share the video. I need y'all to share the video. And if you are on YouTube, please go to the YouTube page. I'm Real Devious. Um, and like, subscribe to it so that we can... We're trying to get the numbers up so that we can do some more stuff for you guys. But the uh, the topic of today is, I think, was it too many choices? Too many choices. Uh, and there were a couple of things that brought this topic to my attention. Uh, it's something that you guys, particularly people who have children, you guys need to really watch this show. You need to listen to what we're talking about. You need to think about it. You need to think about ways that you can uh, solve this, if that's a thing that you need to do, or ways that you can approach this situation. Because your children have too many choices. And recognizing that there is a problem is the first step to recovery. Exactly. It's the first step. And you might be like, what are you talking about? You, right now, you're either watching me on a tablet, a smartphone, a laptop, a desktop, or something like that. Your children have access to those same devices. Yes, you probably are a responsible parent, and you went and put on parental controls. Well, your let's take I a know. son. We're going to start with your son. Let's take your son. Your son... Hangs out with little Fahim that's in his class. And Fahim lives in the apartment building around the corner. Fahim's mother has six other children other than Fahim. Fahim is lost somewhere in the sauce in the middle. So Fahim isn't being checked on as he should. But Fahim does have a phone because his parents try to make sure that he stays in communication. or Or that they can find him whenever he is, you know, not in their sight. Fahim's parents did not get a chance to set the parental controls on any of his devices. So Fahim's, it, his mother's a single That's mother. Fahim is playing Grand Theft Auto with his mother's new boyfriend. Early. I'm just gonna peep. Oh, then there's that. I'm just going to peep game. We'll get to that in a second. I, but I can, you know, I can't wait. I always got to get to that. Listen, but it all happens at once. But so Fahim comes across something on the World Wide Web. And decides to show your kid who can't get it on his phone this wonderful new thing that you guys been keeping him from. Right, that you guys have not talked to him about. Your children have way too many choices and not enough information sometimes. Because some of them, some of you, some of you have prepared your children well. But you, there's still some conversations I guarantee that you guys are not having with your kids and you, you really need to do. The one thing that many parents do, and we were talking about this prior to the show. Always pregame and talk about the show. You forget that your kids have your mind. At least half of it. Now, if you watch this show at any point, you've heard us talk about things called generational trauma. We, you uh, Trauma that's passed down through your DNA. You've heard about that. Now, why is it that you don't think that the sneakiness that you <laughs> exhibited as a youth can be passed down to your kids as well? Your parents didn't know where you were half the time, did they? Now, you're probably in your head going, yeah, well, it was a different time then. Yeah, but we're not talking about that. We're talking about your kids right now. Now, this, now I'm going to tell you what prompted this conversation. Y'all know I always talk about my nephews because, yeah, yeah. I always talk about my nephews because they are so, my nieces, nephews, all of them, I think they are hilarious. They are such a group, a a fun group of individuals, and I enjoy watching them grow. What I enjoy the most is watching them do the things that they think that I have no idea about. That's what I enjoy the most. And I look at them, and one of my nephews said to me, he said, you know, he what he, I forget his exact words, but he made mention of the fact that every now and then when he says something, I'll just get this grin on my face. The you know you know, we all do it that knowing grin. Carol got it. Joy got it right there on her face right now. 
that knowing grin, because you look at your child and already know what they have been up to. You Versus already know. What they are about to be up what to. What they about to do, what they thinking, if they moping around the house, if they doing this, that, and the third, if they done got quiet all of a sudden. If there's you too many kisses know. and one of huggies, mommy. Oh, brother, let me tell you something. You're not fooling anyone. Right. You know. And a lot of us come, you know, you come home, you don't work all day, you don't dealt with a bunch of people that you really probably don't like and put on a brave face, which takes a whole lot of your energy. You come home, you're tired, and you just really do not want to hear about what happened. And if your kid don't say nothing, you all right with it. But you have no idea what your kid did that day. You have no idea what happened to them. What they experienced that was brand new in their life. You probably... Now, there's something that I, I got in the habit because my mother used to ask me all the time. What did you learn today when you went to school? What did you learn today? So, I, I the stock answer is what I learned in school. Not what I went over to my friend's house and learned. Because that was a different education. A completely different education. It's funny you mentioned that uh, <clears throat> Christians in first grade. And, you know, I'm a new mom. I haven't been a mom for very long. And, you know, I have access to information that we didn't have. You know what I'm saying? So, when I get them from school, I don't ask them, you know, how school will happen. I say something crazy uh, like, uh, what was your favorite part? Or, uh, uh, what uh, was the, oh, we, we, we did reading or what, what was the story about? You know what I mean? Something that he has to critically think about, it can't be a stock answer. Right. I'm not going to take a stock answer because I'm not asking you a stock question. I need to really know. See, that's the thing. I asked stock que- I asked the stock answer. And I, I asked a stock question, got a stock answer. But what prompted me uh, to have this conversation with you guys is uh, simply this. One of my nephews, he's 14 now, I think. Something like that. They're getting old. But he um, he's in school, in a public school here where we live in Irvington. Uh, he just entered high school, but he's accepted to a preparatory school, a private school. He just got accepted, but he's already a freshman at this public school. We discussed this in the beginning of the year. If y'all remember any time he posted anything about going to Irvington High School and the drama that ensued, it was for this kid. Because he said, he told us, he said, we sat, me and his mother, my sister, sat down and we were like, okay, what do you want to do? He said, I want to go to a different school, da 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 He had to get his grades together. Okay, fine. We'll do all of that with you, da 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 All of a sudden, the conversation is, well, I'm comfortable there now. Yeah, but we discussed this in the beginning of the year. But remember, I met with your principal, your guidance counselor. I met with the vice principal. I met with um, a few other people. And we had this whole conversation about how we're going to get this done for you. So, yeah, but I, I was, you know, I'm thinking about it. and uh, Okay, listen. So when my sister first told me this over the phone before she brought the boy here, when she first told me this over the phone, there's only one thing that I need to know. And that's from my sister. What did you say to him? That's it, because this is not a negotiation. I don't negotiate with terrorists. Listen, this is not going to happen. You aren't getting ready to talk yourself out of an education because you want to stay at the local high school. That's not about to happen. We're not about to do that. So when she brought him here and that began to be the conversation, you need to explain to me what it is in your life plan that makes this the situation that you now want to enter into. But all that aside... Most this is the same family. nephew that used to come over to my house and uh, we, I used to make him watch movies with me because I noticed that he was sitting playing video games for hours at a time. When I say hours at a time, I didn't know that this was even pop. Like, don't y'all ass get tired sitting on the couch for no. 16 hours? No. <sighs> anyway. No, it's the answer. Uh, it's apparently not because I, mean, I don't understand. I don't understand it. Get the boy uh, stop coming. He said, he told his mother, uh, there's nothing to do over there. He didn't tell his mother the whole backstory, though. But he says, there's nothing to do. Um, every time I go over there, he makes me watch stuff like I'm in school. If that was the case, I could just be in school. Like, that's not why I'm going over there. So there are a few things that I had to, you know, when, when first of all, my feelings got into it. And I wasn't able to get everything out. I had to say that because there's still some things that I need to say to this little motherfucker. Because you got it fucked up, like, real quick, for real. And what I mean is this. He told my sister all of that, like, da 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 What he didn't say was, every time you come to the house, you sit on the couch and play the video game before you come and say hi to everybody in the house. I live here. You better come and say hi to me before you start sitting in my living room playing games on my television. That's disrespectful. 
you get yourself together. That's the part that he left out. That's one of the parts that he left out. Then in, in what he left out with the movie, I gave you an opportunity to pick your own movie. And this brings me to the topic of the show. I know that was the long way around, but this brings me to the topic of the show. I gave him an opportunity to pick what movie because I realized that the movies that I like to watch are very intense. They're very um, informative, they're educational. They have to do with history, um, new thinking, things grown like up that. Stuff. Like grown up stuff. Listen, because I don't have time to feed you baby shit in this life, little black man. I don't have time for that. Okay, Christian. So I'm just okay. not, I don't have time for that. So the fact that you feel like you in school to me tells me that I'm doing a good job and you're Absolutely. learning something. But all that aside, I understand this is not what you're here for. I get it. But what he said to me when I said, well, you picked the movie, what he said was, well, I didn't know what to pick. What do you mean? There's Amazon Prime, there's Netflix, there's Hulu. I don't understand where you lost. Pick a movie. What do you like to watch? You watch movies at home. Because you told your mother there's nothing to do. You watch movies at home. You can watch those same movies here. How is it that this is an issue? He said there are too many choices. Boom. Let that sink in for a second. Because that's not the first time that I've heard youth. And when I say youth, I mean people under the age of 20. Or 20-ish. No, no older than 25. <clears throat> Excuse me. Many of them don't even are in a state of paralysis because they have too many choices. When we were growing up, our choices were significantly simpler. We were on the verge of the computer age. It wasn't the computer age. We were not in the information age and AI and all the rest of that. We weren't there. That is not what this, that that was not, we didn't, it was a policeman, a fireman, you want to go be a lawyer, a teacher, a doctor, a judge, you want to do something like that, though our choices were simple. Go ahead. But can I also just, because when, you know, I got to talk to points that we discussed, uh, the perspective I'm coming from when it comes to our children having too many choices, mm -hmm. I have a six-year-old who has too many choices in life, you know what I mean, not just like technology and stuff, you know, access to information, in his life. He gets to choose too many things for himself at six years old that he can do or don't do, go or not go, want or not want, that we didn't have. We also didn't have. Mm -hmm. I, put, I put on Facebook the other day. It pissed me off because I had a situation set up where I wanted him to go someplace while I did something else so that he wasn't bored sitting at home. I'm telling all my business. Everybody's okay. Um, he was supposed to go with his dad, and that was what I had set up. And dad was ready. Everybody was in place. Little dude told his grandmother he didn't want to go. So the fuck what? First of all, you should be... First of all, he don't have no choices, okay? He don't have no choices with me. He's six years old. Um, This is just one example of one of the things that he gets to choose, you know, maybe with somebody else or some other people that he doesn't get to choose with me. But at the end of the day, I didn't have these options. Mm -hmm. I went where my mother took me, where my grandmother took me. I was left wherever the fuck I was left, with whoever I was left in. I spent summers in Philadelphia by myself as a child. Well, yeah, like a child. 10, 11, 12, 13, by, back up the parkway. You can't be serious. This dude can't go across north. I don't understand. He shouldn't be able to say, I don't want. If it's a reason, something's going on. All right, you know what I'm saying? We can talk about it. I, I'm not, you know what I'm saying, that seriously hard. But I do not negotiate with terrorists. Mm-hmm. I don't owe you anything. And at the end of the day, you safe, you comfortable, wherever you go. I don't care if you're bored. That don't got nothing to do with me. I'm not here to entertain you ever. That's what friends want. That's not, I'm not your friend. I also put on Facebook the other day. Uh, he was on vacation. I need somebody to give him. He need a friend. I'm not her. I'm not your friend. I love Peppa Pig. Don't want to watch her. I'm not saying we can't play a board game or, you know, do some educational week. Because we don't do that. Oh, you want to play a math game? Get the dice out. We can find out how much six and five and five is. We'll do small addition and add four dice together. I'm not about to just sit around playing with you, dog. I don't I don't like trucks like that. <laughs> but, again, him having a lot of options is something we just didn't have. Right. I ate what it was. My mother, I love you to death, sweetheart. Asked me today that I make his spaghetti. I don't work for this man. He wanted spaghetti yesterday, duly noted. When I get there, I haven't been a shot right for myself in ages. I haven't cooked a meal for myself for I don't know how long. I'm not about to interrupt, no no shade, reading my scripts and doing whatever casting call I'm trying to do to make nobody nothing. Much less a six-year-old some spaghetti. He can eat a hot dog, he can eat some cereal like he's been doing. I'm not making a whole pot of spaghetti, but I'm going to have five noodles. At the end of the day, he all right. 
He ain't never died since I met the boy. That was me, my bad. Too many choices, man. Way too many. Way too many. And sometimes too many is it's bad. It's, it's bad I've watched many people, many particularly um it, again, the youth. And and not to say, and we'll get to this in a minute, you know, us as adults have this same type of situation sometimes. But particularly as kids, and I understand that a lot of parents want to give their kids a lot more than they were able to have. I get that. I get that if you have the means and you have, you know, the wherewithal to be able to do so. I get that. Yes, I get yes. that as well. That, yes. But giving somebody everything, everything never made a good person. Giving somebody everything has never made a good person. It has never made them that much better. And what you will find, and I just came across this the other day, the saying that, you know, sometimes you give people too much and they don't fall in love with you. They fall in love with your hand. Because that's what's always giving them. But in regard to having a lot of choices, children, particularly under the age of 25, don't have the context. Just over the age of five. Then is that. But they don't have the context in their lives to navigate these choices. So to leave a choice like what, where, you, where the education, it, where the best education is, to somebody whose brain isn't fully developed, to me is not a wise choice. And I'll also jump in with my counter perspective. Mm-hmm. To let a six-year-old decide that he doesn't want to go to his father's house for any reason is unacceptable. To, for a child to have a father in his life is a blessing. But a father want to be bothered and know when and deal with his son is a blessing. Mm. Nothing should ever interrupt that ever. Why would anybody allow a six-year-old to make that decision that that's not going to continue to happen? That bond is not going to keep being formed right then. He, for whatever reason, he's six. Like you said, he doesn't have the He doesn't understand that he's building with his father and they're spending time together and this is unprecedented in our family generational drama. Wow. Dude, go to your daddy house. Are you kidding me? Wow. We don't know nothing. I don't know nothing about no daddy house. No daddy. So go over there. That man wants you. Wow. Let that boy go to his father that love him. Are you kidding me? Who let no man put asunder? Like, well, I don't understand. Yeah, I don't. I don't and understand. let no child put asunder. He's a child. You don't know no better. Yeah, he doesn't have, again, the context. The life, the life experience to make that decision. Why would you leave that type of decision to a kid? Yes, of course you should confer with your kids. Like, you don't want to send the kid to a place that they're going to absolutely hate. No, of course not. That's not what I'm saying. But that becomes part of communication. That becomes part of the relationship of finding out when things are bothering your kids. When your kid is having a hard time making a decision because they have a whole lot of information on their plate that they do not know how to ingest. Ingest. Digest. That they don't know how to get down. They don't know how to process this information. They don't know that this may be better than this in the long run. This might look good now, but this is not what is better for you in the long run. Christian. This is how you start to build this situation. You say that you want to be at this, you know, because even kids, you ask me, ask kids all the time, what do you want to be when you grow up? Okay, well, you have to begin to build that now with this. This is how you get to that. We don't make those connections for kids a lot of times. And that's what I'm, That if I'm saying anything... I'm saying that before you, and not just your kids, but you too, before, take that next step in the thinking. And I'm going to say again, I can parallel the same situation. You need to. When it comes to Christian and spending time with his father, Mm -hmm. it needs to happen. There's no reason why it shouldn't. Well, that's any kid. So, to come in between that is detrimental to him in ways that he doesn't understand. Mm -hmm. So, I have to do it, the grown-ups have to do it. It just doesn't make any sense that anything can come between that. Like, I'm curious as to how many of you guys let your kids make decisions like that. I, I really wonder how many of you go, oh, well, you don't want to go to that high school, so I'm not going to, he didn't want to go to that, or he or she didn't want to go to that high school, so I'm not going to make him go. Oh, they don't want to go over their father's house, so I'm not going to make him go. Oh, they don't want to go see their mother, so I'm not going to make them go. Or what? they don't want to go to karate and I'm paying for it. Or they don't want to go to swim lesson. Or they don't want to go to after school. My son they don't want to play this instrument. To pick him up at 3 o'clock. That might be the thing that feeds their entire family later on in life. No, I don't want to learn this skill. The kid doesn't understand this is a skill. And you really have to understand that it's probably the way that you phrased it. That made it such a thing that was repellent. It's all in the way that you say it. You have to sell it. 
But you also must give that child context. The information. The, it, you have to give them context on the information is what I'm saying. Because it's a lot of information. It's way too much information for kids to digest. When you hand these kids these things, yes, they know how to work them. But they don't really understand what how is what is work. Just no more than we understand how the light is coming through the screen in the opposite direction from me right now to push the images back so that I can see it. But at the same time, it's broadcasting it out there to y'all across. I don't. I can't explain that any simpler than what I just did. But I know that there's a process that happens, and a lot of it is mechanical, and the other part of it is electronic. I get all of that. But your kids don't have that context. So you hand them things and you're, you you don't know the power that the thing has and where it's going to take your kid. You have to be responsible throughout that whole process and make sure, basically monitor your kid. Make sure that you are finding out, are you having trouble? Because my thing is this, I don't like the paralysis that is happening in the community. You try to, you wonder, when you wonder why your kids don't move from the video game, because that's the one thing that they can control and they can understand it's the one thing in their life that has context. They know how where the cheat codes are because all of their friends are doing it. They know all of these other little shortcuts because that's what their culture is right about now. And it's consistent. All they got to do is charge it up and it's always going to work. Pretty much. But and every time they hit B, the thing going to jump. It's going to jump 150 times if you hit it 150 times. Right. So for a child that doesn't have any consistency in their life and that's what they're seeking, a video game is going to give them that. It's going to give them every just that. Every time you jump up and catch the gold coin in Mario, you and get the chain. when you get the... I'm glad you said that because as the points go up, it... it um, stimulates their pleasure centers and things like that. Like, y'all don't think of that. You think that the kid is quiet and they're away from me and that's good because I'm tired and I want to... Listen, You, it's, it's worth more of an investment in your kid's life. It's worth more of an investment in your kid's life. A lot more. When your kid is looking for a college to go to, when your kid is looking for what they want to do in the world. We often give a whole lot of misinformation. We tell them, well, this is the career where all the money is. Go study that. Well, this is the path to the career where all the money is. And yeah, go do that. We, we say stupid things like that. There are two things that everybody needs to find out before they embark on an institution. And nobody told me this because otherwise I wouldn't owe as much as I do in student loans. I could have saved myself some aggravation. Get out of my head. There are please. two things you need to find out. You need to find out what you like and what you are good at. What you like will bring you happiness. What you are good at will bring you money. Those are the two things that you should tell your children to know before they begin to invest in higher education. It doesn't take you looking through the manual and seeing that they have microscopic ocean, marine, uh, zoology, and that is a new field that is opening up. So I think I want to go there because I might be able to make some money. That, that is not how you live. That's, that's, <laughs> that's backwards thinking. Sit down and have your children find that because otherwise what you, what you will end up doing is creating a situation where you, where the people who you are raising will think that they have to find everything out externally. That's what's going to happen. Because we've come to all these choices in the world because some people dug up things out of their spirit and they found that they had an affinity for this. But it doesn't mean that you have to have an affinity for it because now it's a new field. It is opening up and now everybody has it. That's the new buzzword. That is not what you have to do. Find out what is good to you. Especially when it comes to college. Um, when I say get out of my head, I saw some Tamara Hall earlier. That's my friend. Shout out to Tamara Hall. Hey, Tamara. <clears throat> and the Tamara Hall Show. Um, and Nicole, the producer. Um, but their topic today was um, college. They had a guy on there who had a book about um how to get a debt-free degree because that's what you need to do if you want to mm. pursue higher education. Uh, I'll tell you who to do was. But the point of the show kind of, you know what I'm saying, Charles Hammer was, do we really need to get these degrees anymore? Do we really exactly. need these loans? Do we really need this? This particular higher education path to get where we want to go now mm -hmm. in an era where you can do it on YouTube by liking and sharing our video or you can do it, you know, with your iPhone or your Android or you can do it by, you know, you can still fly to L.A., 
with twenty dollars in your pocket and become somebody. Mm-hmm. You could still work hard on the basketball court every day and and make it to the NBA. So you know, <clears throat> we don't always have to take the path of college. And in this day and age, with us knowing it's a business and knowing it's a racket, and knowing most of the time you end up with most student loans and no job, the show was basically like, "Why are we really still doing this?" Right. It's an old program, and, it, and it's an work. old, outdated choice mm-hmm. that we're still making, and we're still that you know in debt. No, I'm not saying that. No, don't go to college. That is not what I'm saying. That's not what I'm saying. If that is what you, you, you want to do, you can say that's what I said, and you can find out what it is that you want to do and get some more information and make yourself better through doing that because I had a wonderful time in college. I, I did really as well. Did. I'm not knocking nobody's situation. I think Shout it should be free. That's getting scholarships and grants. I'm talking about everybody that's working. My mother worked to put me through college. My grandmother put up a house to put me through school. Shout mm-hmm. out to Virginia State. I did all of that. But I now know that that wasn't necessary for me and not it will necessary. not be necessary for Christian. No, um, it's not necessary. Christian knew this. I <laughs> had, had a, um, a friend of mine, uh, one of my, uh, shout out, uh, Frankie S. Frankie. Estevet. Is it Frankie Estevet? Frankie Estevet. DJ Frankie. Um, we were talking after uh, Deuce. We were down at, uh, listening to oh, Deuce Martinez. Yes. And we were outside talking after Nunu had shared this video. The, you know, the infamous Byron Allen video prior to him going to the Supreme Court, which I'm still wanting. Every time I Google information, I can't find out anything. It's like very, very hush hush. I don't know if it's over. I have no idea. But I, I'm still looking for information. So if anybody has information, put them in the comments. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Yeah, we need that. Move, but, and we need that information. With him being, I was telling y'all, I wasn't really feeling this dude in a lot of ways. With him being a big media mogul dude or whatever, he was real vocal about what was going on and everything. How come he got all these media outlets, all these networks? Why is that what's going on? Because there might be a quash on it. You might not be able to discuss it while it's going on. I don't know. I just yeah, I don't know. About, but... I, that's the only thing that I can think of. I don't know. I don't know. It it's might not be it. It might be it. I'm but to we will find out. Um, I feel like he but in the midst of that, Frankie, we were having a conversation, and Frankie said that uh, we I asked about his son, and he was saying that his you know his son is in school. I think he's getting his master's degree. So, dude, my dude, every time I say it, like he shows me mad love. So, respect, much respect to you, and good luck on your education. God bless you. And his father was like, "Yeah, it's my it's my responsibility to make sure that he gets an education and doesn't come out in debt." That's right. And I respect the fuck out of that. And I met a really good white people while I was working down DEA. They did the same thing. I respect that. Like Retired cops. Shout out to all my retired cops. These yo, older white men was at a desk job every day, nine to five, with a turkey chicken sure. sandwich and a canteen of coffee. Just so Katie and Jimmy did not have... And I'm not making... No I student promise loans. You, no student loans, no debt, was able to live comfortably. Mm-hmm. And they, they had done their careers. Mm-hmm. Kept their families, had cars, and the only reason they got up in the morning was so them kids did not have to owe nobody a dime. Now, that's the out That's the out of you. The interview is, it's not worth it if you are going to invest a whole bunch of money into a person who has absolutely no idea what they want to do, no idea what they like in life, and no idea what they're good at. Why are you sending you you send a kid who's good at math to school for psychology? It doesn't make sense because they think that that is where the money is. That's not how you train your kids. But first, you must give them context, which means that you must monitor the things that you put in your kids' hands because once they put once you put it in your kids' hands, your kids are using it. They're consulting with other people who know how to use it better than you. They're finding out new ways to use it. They're using, they're getting more information and they're not explaining to you what they found out. And the other part of that is they have all this information rattling around in their heads that they don't know what to do with. So when you wonder why your kid is acting a certain way, they're doing something that you've never seen before. And you're like, oh my God, where did they get that from? And of course, nobody believes you. They think they're doing it at your, that you're doing it in your house because... Where else would you get it from? It's because you haven't monitored what you put in your kid's hands. Your kid is now faced with a whole bunch of information without context. Now they're acting it out in real time in 3D. And you're sitting there like, oh, my God. And that's the thing that we don't, we don't have. Wait, what's that? That young people have. What's that? They have information and they have energy. So mm-hmm. when you say they're acting it out... Like you said, when I In get 3D, home, yeah. mm-hmm. I don't have time to watch what you're doing. I don't have time to listen to your heavy ass feet jump up and down above my head. You running back and forth. Because again, you got energy, you see. Right. So I need to be someplace quiet where you're not someplace loud. I don't care if it's the tablet over there in the corner for six hours in a row. Mm-hmm. You're not running past me. You don't need nothing to eat. And I can get off my feet. Mm-hmm. That's real. It's unfortunate. 
You know what it's worth. Mm, it's not. It's ne- It's not necessarily unfortunate. It's only unfortunate if that's the if that's the, the program. Only, right, right. If that's the only program, that's when it's unfortunate. If that's what happens all the time, it's unfortunate. It's only that I would say. But if you check in regularly, periodically, every now and then, what are you? What, what's going on with you? What you? What you been up to? What you learned new? What your friends talking about? And you start that early so that it's not weird. And you're trying to inject yourself into their lives as a teenager, trying to figure it out because now you know the suspicious behavior. And now you're trying to figure out what your kid is doing. But your kid has learned the entire New York subway underground rail system. And that is where they are until you get off of work. Y'all are probably switching trains going back and forth. That you like, asked, listen. That they, said, they asked you to send them that $20. I'm telling y'all. I want you to pay attention a little bit more. The things that we have for our children, the context to give them on how to make better decisions, it begins with us making better decisions. I think it also begins with us realizing that they are much better equipped to do the shit we were not as equipped to do. Like what? We fumbled through just getting home before our mother or, you know, um, sneaking out the house to go to this dude's house or, you know, it's not a party or we're not just going out for a house to study. You know, we, we had to maneuver a certain way, you know, getting back and forth to New York, that type of stuff. These kids, between technology and us having money because we're doing too much for our kids, mm-hmm. they can pull this shit. They've been pulling this shit off under our very noses. They they last us at it because they have better tools than we did. Kids are not just buying candy. You used to have to come to my house for my grandmother to say, no, I'm not at my house. Or no, you can't see her. Why was or I, I have to her? meet you at the corner. Listen. You understand what I'm saying? Remember what you were talking about earlier? I don't, I don't so I had this little earlier, and I was thinking, if I wanted to tell all my friends the same thing, I had to either wait to see them, if if all of them went, if we all went to the same school, and it wasn't some of my friends lived in the same block or on the same street or in the same neighborhood but didn't go to my school, they went to another school. If it, that wasn't the case, if all the friends that I wanted to tell was in school and I had to wait to get to school to tell all my friends, I couldn't sit in the bed, oh, let me tell everybody this and post it on social how about, media. How about you couldn't tell one person that? How yeah. about some shit happened to you at 3.08? Mind you, for Taya done got on the bus already. I'm walking home. Listen. I can't. It depends on how the phone happened. At, I thought we did have phones, you know what I'm saying? We was rich. But <laughs> let's just say it happened at 9.06 and I wasn't calling Mary McCray Apples. Uh-huh. I got to wait till what? I see her in the morning. What do you mean? Right. She needs to know about this ugly sweat I just got from McCrory. And you got to sit with that the whole <laughs> I, night. How did we ever survive? I do not know how we survive. How but kids today it? do not have that issue. That is not the issue. They can spill their entire diary Listen. every single day on social media. And don't think because you don't see the app on their phone that it doesn't exist and they don't have an account. Please know that. Please know that. And another thing, I was talking with a friend of mine, you know, She had some issues going on with her daughter. And I keep having these conversations recently with people. I don't know what it is um, that's going on where parents and children, or has it always been this parent and children disconnected in communication? And I'm noticing it so much more so because my generation, which would have kids maybe in their 20s, a lot of us, Many of my friends have kids who are just reaching adulthood. They're in their early 20s. Some of them have them real young and down to five and six years old. Others have them all the way up to 20 and 30 years old. And if you're not having the conversation from very early with them and, you know, creating that situation, what, 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 what What is happening? Like they need that for something. And, our, because we, we, again, that's the other point that I was really trying to make, was that we are the last ones who didn't have a phone in our hand all the time. Or a device in our possession or that was ours. Even if it wasn't with us all the time, we didn't have laptops, uh, MacBooks, uh, notebooks. I had pagers and beepers. We, that, was that was the, was the beginning of our technology, was the pagers. on this light chip that we was getting. And if you had a two-way pager where you could send messages automatically, you didn't have to spell it out with numbers, you was the bomb. Didn't I tell you? I know I'm talking smack about what's going on or whatever, like, but Christian grandmother is the bomb always having. Mm. We were rich. You know I had an operator. What's your message? What? 
Okay, my screen was I this big. So it was blue and green, and all the words came out. Meet me at McClory's at four. Never mind. See, that's what trying I, to tell I, you. had to spell hello with the bread, four, the me. three, the mm-hmm. seven, the seven, and the zero mm-hmm. just to say hi. With and, my and that's picture. what I'm trying to tell you. It was so terrible because my mother, when I was 16, she gave me a whole bunch of money. I'm not going to say it because she probably embarrassed. I'm embarrassed. It was a lot of money for that time and for this time. To be honest with you, I would never do it because she's never getting that. Unless I'm real, real rich, but he going to have to do something for the community. She gave me a lot of money, went downtown, got me a pager. Bam, I'm hit with it. Boop, boop, boop. Walk in the house. She like, oh, what you doing? You like a drug dealer or other things? Only drug dealers had that. You got to get that back. You're not old enough. I'm 16. I'm like, mom. Okay, you gave me money. It's yellow. Look at me. Pal. You can't have that. You look like the cops and the drug dealers. You can't. Y'all take it back. What do you mean? I'm hot. I'm popping. I'm not taking shit back. All right, lady. I'm going to take it back. Took it off. Set on dresser. Went downtown. Took it back to the dude. She was like, oh, my mother was all big time. Oh, I'm going to have the attorney general. She knew these people. I'm going to have them shut the store down and they don't give you your money back. Okay, lady, well, I'm going to go there. It's downtown. No, they're going to give me a little $50 back. Calm down. I had to show with the $50. Here go the $50. We know I went to the store next door and got my pager, right? Mm-hmm. Don't got time. Put it on silent. Had it on the pillow for two fucking years. Paid the little $16 a month. I've been moving. Under her very nose. And we shared. My mother and I shared a bedroom when I was 16 years old. We wasn't really neither one of us there because I was working. She was working. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that people was in there with us. So to say mm-hmm. nowadays, people can't be in your house and you don't know it. Like, these kids got access yeah. that we didn't have. Yeah. They much better at doing If you took their phone, to. they might have a backup. Let me tell you something. They might have a heart attack because of the shit that they about to do, try to do, that you about to either know about or is a seat with. So, if there's anything that I want to leave you guys with, I really just, um, I don't like to see people and for the sake of trying to be a good parent. And I get that I get trying to be, I get, you know, doing your best to be a good parent, but when you became a parent, right? I need you to, you know, take your thinking a little bit further when you think of your kids. You became a parent. Being a parent is a responsibility. It is not just a responsibility. Legally, it's just a responsibility to feed, clothe, and shelter the person that you brought here. But morally, it's a lot more than that. Socially, it's a lot more than that. Culturally, it is a lot more than that. I'm so tempted to intercede and always tell my little gay lesbian story about how important it is when you say taking your thinking back further. Mm-hmm. You have to start back to before you have a kid. It's not back enough to start mm-hmm. with when you have the kid, when you're pregnant. You have to think before you become a parent. Well, the, the, the problem to. with that... You have to. Well, no, because a lot of people are out here not doing it. Yeah, so you don't have to. But, but it would be myself, a whole lot what better. What a wonderful world. I'm a mother. We all exactly. Talk. I think what a wonderful... It would be nice. Because it works so well for me. I'm telling you. I'm it works. But, uh, yeah, we, we understand it. That's not something that... And, and I really wish people would just take that minute. Can't, we, we need to have a show about it because... We have. We we've talked, the, we've we, talked about this shit but, but today. We need a whole show, though. Like, my, I tell my whole story. We can do some research. Like, because it's, oh, okay. it's only us black people that don't pre-plan. No. To this very no. day. No, 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 let, no, let, no. let me tell you a story. Every I, I will. It, it's a, a commercial on the air right now. I saw the other day, and one of the side effects, whatever the medication, it says if you're pregnant or planning to be pregnant. Mm-hmm. Family planning happens all the time. It does. Hispanic households, uh, in, Indian, West Indian, uh, Nigerian people are planning families, so they're thinking about kids and all of that stuff beforehand. Yeah. We well, I'm, I'm not saying that people oh, yeah, don't. Yeah. I'm just saying that it's not a lot. Those people, some of them do, just like some black people plan family, just like you did. Yeah, but that's true. everybody don't do that. We, we gotta do and that. a lot of people family by accident. So if you out here family by accident, there's one thing that you do know. The one thing sure on your side is you have a certain amount of months to begin to think about the type of the relationship that you want to have with the person that's going to come out of your body. <laughs> that's so crazy. That's you know. if you're a woman. If you are a man, you have a certain amount of months. To think about the type of relationship that you want to have with the person who's going to come out of the body of the woman with the whom you had sex. already came out of your body. <laughs> or came in or whatever. However that works, I don't know. It wasn't there. So, to that end, it is worth it to invest a little bit more. It'll save you a whole lot when it comes to your kids' education. Not just in money. 
in the long run, like college, it'll save you time. If you can communicate with your kid and find out contextually what it is they know and understand and don't know and understand, you will spend a whole lot less time at your kid's school trying to figure out what's wrong and why Junior is acting out. It's worth it. It's a worth an investment for you. Because the headache that you feel when you come home having to deal with your kids is partly your responsibility because you haven't fostered or created a situation where that doesn't need to exist. And you're spoiling these kids with mm-hmm. these choices. Right. And then should another person, entity, situation, counteract or entity with what they want, now we got a problem. Now we all got a Then problem. you want to correct them on correcting your child that needed correcting. First of all, he mine. Listen, I don't give a fuck who he is. If he out here in society, he is subject to the rules of society. Right. He's ours. All of ours. Right. And that's what you, that's the other thing that you need to understand. You might train your kid a certain way at home. Once they get out into society, they don't deal with everybody else and everybody ain't at your house. So they don't know what you do at home and don't nobody really care. <laughs> Including your kid. So all of the stuff that your kid gets away with at home that you allow when they do that stuff in, in you know, in public in 3D for real. Yeah. Everybody, nobody out here negotiating with terrorists. Like, for real. It's not happening. We're not doing it. Not ready to do it. I'm not doing it. Not young terrorists. Not old terrorists. Yeah, because a lot of y'all are terrorists. terrorists. <laughs> a lot of y'all are emotional terrorists. Okay, a I lot just... of y'all are mental terrorists. But we'll get, we'll get to that in another show after Kira read the book. We'll, we'll talk about yes, that. Yes, I'm going to definitely read the book. Yeah, because once we get to the book, it's going to be utter joy. I promise you. I'm not, you know what? Listen. Somebody called me, a friend of mine called me the other day, and she was she had experienced joy for the first time. Like, literally. Like, the type of joy where... You, this is the type of story you can tell me. Like, yeah. Oh, okay, great, great. <laughs> no, it, because being happy is a decision, but it's experiencing true. joy is something, it's in, it's in, it's something that comes out of you. It's not something that you can experience from externally. So, I've also heard something like happiness is temporary and joy is permanent, and you know, all of that type of stuff. Huh? I've never heard of that. Like, you know, happiness can come and go. It can be affected. Okay, and joy, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Kind of like once you got it. Yeah, once like, you decide that you need some joy in your life and you create a situation where there is joy, you will have some joy. But I say that to say this. If you can create joy in your life, you can create better circumstances for yourself. When you create better circumstances for yourself, your children, the people that you brought in here that you're supposed to love, protect, and create, um, and it's supposed to mold, rather. Not create, but mold. They will do better. It's like automatic. I want to say inherent, but maybe that's too much. It's, it's automatic. It's like... Yeah. So it's quid pro quo. It's worth it. <laughs> it's quid pro quo. To sit down and stop... Uh, not to... to not, not, not to stop, but to invest in yourself and your family in that, in that regard. The context that your kid... The context that your kid... That your children need to make really big decisions, they don't have it. Yes, don't be, and you should not feel bad about saying, no, you can't go to that party because I don't like the people that's going to be there. No, you can't hang around. My mother said it to me. Let me tell you something. A boy could come to my door, my porch, because let me tell you something, he couldn't even get up on the porch, could come to the front of my house. Mm. My grandmother would open the door, not say a solitary word, and that joke would be gone. Mm Mm-hmm. Could be a girlfriend of mine. It ain't gotta be no dude courting me. It could be a friend that she don't like that I think is a friend from across the street and she ain't feeling them. Who sit on the porch? She ain't here. I'm standing in the doorway. What you can't I'm not here. I'm right. Stinky lady. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's what we did. And, yeah. and I lived through it and we got through it. And we learned some things and we was good. We, and, and we, we we're, better we're better we for it. We're better for it. We absolutely are. So don't don't you're not here to be your kid's friend. Um your your children your your kids childhood should not be a big negotiation. No, 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 no. Your chi- I, I, let me say that again because some of y'all out here negotiating with people whose brains aren't even fully formed yet, and they I find that no amazing. money. Then it's <laughs> they don't even got no money. No shade. If we gonna keep going with this, you know what I'm saying? Because I love it, and I had the conversation with Bay all the time. She just repeated to somebody else that I don't negotiate with terrorists. There's a there's a ransom in all these movies, right? Bad boys, uh-huh. bad boys. Uh-huh. But you go to the third one, right? Dude, these people don't have no money. They got no leverage. Why are nothing. you giving them what they want? I right. don't understand. They can't do nothing to you. They not affect nothing about your life. Nothing. What they gonna you do? Cry? No money. They gonna They're cry about it? Nothing. They gonna tell? Who they gonna tell you? They gonna tell you or you? Come on. Um. 
there's a backbone in our society that my parents had, uh, the generation before them had, and they gave it to us. I don't know. I don't know if y'all giving it to y'all kids. You know what? It is. Stop sending your children out here without context for the world for one, because they are meeting people who have that context, and it's not going to be a, a pretty scene once you do that. But also, stop negotiating with your children for their betterment. Their best life should not be a negotiation because they don't feel like it. And because you haven't taken the opportunity, or maybe you haven't had the time, whatever the because some things happen. It's not, not this is not hold on, hold on. this is not a blame game for the parents. That's let me say that. Me this too. is not a blame game for the parents. Um, but what it is is it's a call to make sure that you are doing your best and, and doing a little bit more than you think you can. And full disclosure, mm -hmm. uh, from Just Join Media, as it pertains to Just Junior, um, <laughs> that boy got five tablets. He be on my phone till it die, his tablets till it die, uh, but he also goes to the museum. Right. And we also have a 50-pack of dice where we really do math games, and he told me it was the best thing he ever did. Harmony. Um, and stuff, so it, it's, it's a supplement as well. Trust me, I'm, I'm not rushing that. home to do origami with this joker. No. I assure you. Because, yeah, happening. they're little people with a lot of energy. <laughs> I'm a big person with no energy. That's what I'm exactly. But um, you know, you gotta, you gotta do you all of have it. You have, it's called harmony. It's balance. You know, however you want to work that situation out. It's not too much of this and not too much of that. It's a little of everything to give them a well-rounded picture. And you, that's what they, that's what children don't have. Children don't have a well-rounded picture. But, um, like you said, full disclosure, a lot of you don't either. <laughs> And with that, um, I'm Real Devious. And I'm just Joy. Thanks again for tuning in. We love you so Make much. Make sure you like and share the video. Do that hot shit. <laughs> we about to get out of here. Yeah. And remember, like on this road of life that we travel, you know, if you should happen to stumble and you know along the way, because it happens. So just remember, if you should happen to stumble along the way and trip, the harder you fall, the higher you bounce. Remember that when you tripping. We, we out of here. So.